Hey guys, welcome back to Henry Stenhill Tutoring. Today we'll take a look at adding an API to PFSense to allow you full control over its configuration from a shell script or any other programmable interface. We'll look at how to install and configure the API, see an example at the console of how to access it, and have a look at a very simple web app that we can use to quickly turn firewall rules on and off from a phone. Please consider showing some support by liking and subscribing if you enjoy this content. So let's start by taking a look at the author's web page. So this is the GitHub page for Faux API, the PFSense API that we will be using. It supports a bunch of different commands which we can select from. Now, it does not exist on the PFSense software repository by default, so you have to follow this installation procedure to install this package on your PFSense firewall at the shell. So you'll need to log in via SSH, open up the shell, and then you'll be able to install this. Once you have it installed, you must configure your credentials.ini file. This is fairly straightforward and doesn't take much. So this is the sample configuration file that comes with the API software. You'll need to copy this to your own credentials.ini file within the etc faux API directory. And once you've done that, use these two statements here to generate your own API key value and API secret value. You would then replace the example values, this is the key value here, and this is the secret value here, with whatever you generate, and decide on what permissions you want to allow for that particular API. As you can see here, you can just do an asterisk and allow all permissions. So once you've done that, you would, would then want to test it out by installing a Python uh, script here, which is this pfsense faux API. You can run pip3 install and that, and that will install it on your local machine, so you can use that as a test client to verify functionality. Let's have a look at what this will do. It's recommended you install the JSON query application, which will uh, convert the JSON output that this produces to a more human-readable format. Otherwise, things are a bit difficult to interpret. So, this command takes a few arguments here. We have a host argument, an API key argument, and an API secret argument, as well as a command that we want to execute. So we can run this gateway status command, for instance, and pipe it to the JSON query command, and then we have our nice pretty output. You'll note, if I don't do that pipe, things are a little more tricky to read and interpret. And of course, this is a small amount of output, but if this was like a full configuration, it would be very hard for you to read through that and, so, and see what's happening. So next, let's have a look at the simple web interface I wrote that takes advantage of this API to make changes on the firewall. If we go over here to this access control page, we can see a number of things, primarily though the firewall bypass and master status, as well as some different options down here we can select. These are just buttons. If we check out the firewall right now, we see that there are rules that are disabled and enabled on this firewall, particularly for this KidsNet interface. So let's say we want to enable this bypass that would allow access to the internet at any time outside of the normal scheduled daytime access that's allowed for the kids here at home. If we click on firewall bypass on, we'll see this changes to enabled. And then if we go back to our firewall and refresh this information, we'll see now that these rules have been turned on. We can do something similar with the master rules and we can turn them off. And simply go back, refresh, and we'll see these are turned off now, which won't impact anything as long as these bypass rules are enabled. However, if we disable those as well, now there would be no access at any time to the internet for this network. So this is sort of how we can quickly and easily control access policies. This is very useful, for instance, for me, because we limit the times at which our kids can go online, but sometimes there's a special request, like, for instance, to do homework outside of the normal hours, so it might be useful to be able to enable things without having to get to a computer, log into the web interface, and make changes. So this can be accessed right from my phone, and very quickly can adjust the firewall rules for me. So. To give you an example, I used it this morning at the breakfast table when my daughter decided she wanted to begin doing her homework a bit early. Next, let's take a look at the source code for this page and see how it's all put together. 
First, we have some variables that we define here, simply the API key and secret, followed by the bypass and master rules. These are strings that match part of the description in the rules on the firewall. Then we have a turret pfSense host IP address that references the IP of the firewall in question that this will control. Just very quickly, we'll take a look at the pfSense firewall. You can see here in my descriptions, I have some kids bypass and kids master rules. And this string is present in all of the different uh, rules that are used to enable and disable access. This is how we know what rules to check the status of, as well as what rules to change if we want to either enable or disable them. So back to our source, there's a logic check here that looks for post data, then decides an action to take if it sees that. There's a section here that creates the base HTML page with some CSS styling to make things look nice and pretty. And then we call a render page function. And this function actually goes out and it uh, creates the status output that we see at the top of the page uh, based on what it gets back from the check firewall status function, which we'll see in a moment. You'll note there's also a reference to a switch interface here that's controlling a TV. That's simply using the standard PHP SNMP2 GET functions. So that's something you can look at if you're interested in, but I won't really cover it very much here. Uh, finally, of course, there's a section that creates the buttons that you can use to then control this script. Of course, down here we now have the functions that are being called. So first we have check firewall status. This thing simply goes and gets the current configuration, loops through the rules section, and it looks for any rules matching the particular prefix string in the description that have this disabled array element set. And if it's set, it returns a value that's uh, one or greater. And then our page will render accordingly that the firewall rule is disabled. If a value of zero is returned, then that means no, none of the rules that match that string were disabled, so they must be enabled. And the page will render accordingly. The next function is firewall action. This is what actually changes things in the firewall. Similar to above, it gets the full configuration. It loops through that configuration in the rule section, checking for any uh, firewall rules that match the description string. And if it sees them, depending on the action defined, it will either unset the array's disabled element or it will set the disabled element to either enable or disable that rule then it simply reapplies the entire configuration back to the firewall, again using the API request function as we saw earlier, and simply using config set as opposed to config get, and also providing the full data that is then converted into JSON by the API request function. Then of course there's the API request function, and you can see it's fairly straightforward. It's just using curl to communicate with the firewall's web interface, and it provides a faux API auth string, which it generates using a separate function called authgen below. And it then can, can provide JSON data if we're doing a config set, or if we're doing a config get, it will simply retrieve that information, which is defined up here by building a path and adding that path to a URL variable that is then passed into our curl init. So very, fairly straightforward stuff. Uh, the authgen function is responsible for calling the make nonce and make timestamp functions, which are below. You can take a look at those, see how they work on your own. There is a hash value that's set based on the hash of the secret, the timestamp, and the nonce all combined. This is then appended at the end of a variable that contains the API key, colon, a, the timestamp value, colon, the nonce, and finally a colon, and the full hash. That's returned back up to the API request function so that the request can be validated and the firewall can take action on it. This is basically how the script works. Um, you can again take a look down at these. They're pretty straightforward and self-explanatory and use this information, if you like, to build your own simple web interface to control a PSNS firewall you have at home or at work or anywhere else. Keep in mind, these same functions, such as config set, can be used for other things too. 
So if you can use some kind of automation to build or manage your firewall configurations, you can do mass changes, for instance. Let's say you have like 10, 20, or 30 PFSense firewalls that are all being used across your organization or on customer sites, and you want to make one change to all of them, the same change, you can basically do it with this API and save yourself the hassle of having to log into every single firewall and making those changes manually through the web UI. So I hope this has been helpful. If so, again, please remember to like and subscribe for more of this stuff. If you have any feedback for me or any questions, please be sure to leave it below in the comments section and I'll gladly get back to you when I can. This is Henry, it's been fun and I'll see you next time.